It was crisis that brought Hosni Mubarak into power. Now, nearly three decades later, as crisis again engulfs Egypt, Mubarak is widely seen as the root of the problem. Mubarak's political rise began in 1975 when he became President Anwar Sadat's trusted vice president. Six years later, the former Air Force commander was thrust into the international spotlight when Islamic militants charged a Cairo reviewing stand during a military parade, assassinating Sadat. Mubarak escaped with only minor injuries. Seven days later, he was Egypt's new president. He played a, an important uh, role in uh, maintaining law and order in Egypt, especially after the assassination of President Anwar Sadat. And so for a long time he was seen as someone who both represented change as well as representing stability and continuity. Mubarak continued Sadat's key foreign policy tenets, including peace with Israel and a power alliance with the United States. In the decades that followed, Mubarak remained one of America's staunchest allies in the Arab world. He supported the U.S. in the first Gulf War and became a key negotiator in the Mideast peace talks. In exchange, Washington bolstered Egypt with billions of dollars of U.S. aid. But his country's population was not always behind his pro-America positions. There is a perception that uh, uh, he was becoming too close to, to Washington, that uh, a lot of people, the Iraq war was a big issue for many in Egypt and in the Middle East as a whole. In the 1990s, Mubarak fought hard against a Muslim militant resurgence, but his crackdown nearly brought him the same fate as Sadat. In 1996, he survived an assassination attempt in Ethiopia, his government's crackdowns against dissenters continued. In September of 2005, Mubarak won Egypt's first ever presidential election. He defeated 10 other candidates to hold on to power. The charges of voter fraud and intimidation were rampant. Mubarak never had the charisma of his two predecessors, Sadat and Gamal Abdel Nasser. Under his rule, Egyptians faced economic stagnation, corruption, and a battle against Islamic militancy at the expense of personal freedoms. He's never had a big idea. He hasn't led Egypt anywhere, and, and in many cases, Egyptians feel that there's been a stagnation in Egypt. As the years went by, Mubarak became increasingly aloof. He appeared to be grooming his son to replace him, which only added to the growing resentment of Egyptians. Now, as Mubarak's rule ends, it's clear his son won't be leading the country. But beyond that, Egypt's long and near-term future appear to be up in the air. It's unclear what a post-Mubarak Egypt looks like, and that's partly because Hussein Mubarak has wanted to ensure that nobody knew what a post-Mubarak Egypt looked like. And until you know that, it's hard to, to tell where a whole number of things are going to go. Sandy Kozell, The Associated Press.